Chan Suat used to say that the mind settling into concentration is like the mind falling asleep, except that it doesn't sleep. And that's where it gets tricky. In other words, how do you bring the mind to stillness and yet stay awake? It basically happens in three stages. You start with your ordinary, everyday level of concentration. It's called momentary concentration. The kind of concentration that allows you to listen to things, to memorize things, to read a book and remember what you've read so that it all makes sense. That kind of concentration is something we all have. It lasts for a moment, or it lasts for moments. You might find yourself slipping off and coming back, slipping off, coming back, but at least you, there's enough sense of continuity so you can remember. And that's the kind of concentration you start out with when you focus on the breath, or focus on bhutto, or whatever your meditation object is. You find the mind slipping off, but you bring it back. It slips off, and you bring it back. There's kind of a rhythm to it, like music. You play a musical phrase, and then you stop, and then there's another phrase, and then you stop. But there's enough continuity so that you can see the pattern, you can hear the pattern. So you find yourself with the breath. And you may stay with a couple breaths and wander off, say, maybe between the in-breath and the out-breath, or the out-breath and the in-breath, and then start up again. This is normal. The important thing is that you keep coming back, coming back, coming back. And as you work with this kind of concentration, you begin to realize the reason it falls off is that this level of concentration can't stand pain. Even the slightest little bit of displeasure, it gets knocked off. Or maybe not even pain so much as displeasure, boredom, anything that's negative, unpleasant. The mind loses its focus for a minute because of that. This is why the way to move on from this stage of concentration to the next one is to learn how to work precisely with discomfort. You don't have to start with major pains, just the slight discomfort in the breath. Maybe it's too long, maybe it's too short, too shallow, too deep, whatever. You learn to adjust it. You learn to work with it, and that gives you the confidence that you don't have to be afraid of these things. A little bit of discomfort comes up, and you can deal with it. And this allows your concentration to get more continuous. You move on to the next level, which is called threshold or access concentration, or neighborhood concentration. It's in the neighborhood of getting really settled down, but it's not quite there yet. This is where the mind grows pretty peaceful. But it's very easy in this stage for it to lose its focus. As I said, with momentary concentration, the problem is that it can't stand displeasure. Well, the problem with access concentration is that when it runs up against real pleasure, it loses its focus. Because this is the way the mind normally is. It's beginning to, it's so used to falling asleep when things get pleasant and easy like that, that it just lets go. People who tend to have visions will have visions in this state. People who don't will at least still find that they're wandered off very easily. So the important thing at this stage is to give the mind work to do in the pleasure. Just as with momentary concentration, you 
focus directly on dealing with the problem, which in that case is its weakness in the face of pain or displeasure. Here the problem is the mind's weakness in the face of pleasure, so you focus on the pleasure. This is why John Lee has you spread the breath throughout the body, both to give you something to do and to enlarge your frame of reference, because you find as you get more settled down that the breath gets softer, more refined. It's harder and harder to keep track of. There are lots of different ways of working with the breath in the body. One way we discussed this afternoon is stay focused on the same spot you're always focused on. Just broaden your sense of awareness, the range of your awareness, so that it encompasses the whole body. and then allow the breath to adjust so that it feels good as much as possible throughout the whole body. This way you get used to working with your pleasure. This is one of the distinctive features of the Buddha's teachings. He doesn't take plain pain or pleasure as an end in and of itself. Each of them has its uses. When pain comes, what do you do with it? When pleasure comes, what do you do with it? Instead of simply suffering from the pain or enjoying the pleasure, you learn how to work with these things so they can take the mind to a deeper level of concentration. Because what happens when you work with that sense of pleasure? and broaden your awareness. The mind gets so totally involved in the body as a whole that it can't do anything else. It's like you've nailed down its hands and its feet. So all it can do is just be there. Or you might make another comparison. The mind that slips off to the past or the future, even a little bit, has to be a very small mind. It's almost as if it needed to go down a little tube to get to these things. Well, when the mind is large like this, it can't, it can't go. It's stuck. If it's going to go, it has to shrink. So as you're sitting here with this broadened awareness, centered in one spot but filling the whole body, you're really fixed in the present moment. That's why it's called fixed penetration. And from that point on, all you have to do is just maintain that state. Learn to keep your balance there. The breath will go still. Sometimes it even seems to stop. Just let it stop. Because you don't need the in and out breath anymore. It's just awareness filling the body. And that's it. This is the state of concentration that doesn't get waylaid, either by pleasure or by pain. It's the kind of concentration you want. You get here by letting go of other thoughts, but also by being very focused on the breath. This is where it's different from falling asleep. Because when you fall asleep, things get still and then you just let go totally. Let go of all your mindfulness, all your alertness and move off into another stage of becoming, they call it. Whatever little world happens to appear in your mind. When we fall asleep, it's usually in this state of threshold concentration. So this is what you have to work through. Learn not to get carried off by the pleasure or the sense of ease. Realize, okay, there's work to be done. It requires skill. Because sometimes working with a pleasure you create pain and then the mind doesn't want to settle down. But you work at it again and again and again, and after all you develop skill. So you do your work, but you do your work in pleasure. And you 
create an even more agreeable place to stay, however you work with a sense of energy in the body. And John Lee gives some recommendations, but you notice that in his Dharma talks he talks about the breath energy in all kinds of ways. There's no one way of conceiving the breath. That's going to work for everybody. So explore and work things out on your own. Because after all, it is your body you're settling into. You take the instructions to see if they give you pointers. But you also have to use your own imagination, your, ingen your own ingenuity, your own powers of observation to see exactly how the energy in the body is comfortable or uncomfortable, where you can maximize the comfortable spots and let everything spread so it all connects. And then you learn how to stay there. And don't think of the staying there simply as waiting until you're allowed to do insight practice. A lot of the skill in learning how to stay in concentration is developing precisely the mental qualities you're going to need for insight. Because you're going to get more and more sensitive to even the slightest formations of thought in the mind. And you learn to see right through them, not get carried off into their little worlds. And so that's the, precisely the skill you need in order to see formation or fabrication just as that, formation or fabrication. It's like taking the old Zen story about the finger pointing at the moon and turning it around. You don't want to look at the moon, you want to look at the finger, because the finger is what's fooling you. It's pointing you away from what it's doing. So all the important work is right here, learning how to deal first with pleasure, or excuse me, learning how to deal first with pain and then learning how to deal with pleasure. So the mind can get to settle down in a way that really is still and solid and very alert. <laughs>